try to handle this quickly. No longer hunger, grow weary, or feel anything but loneliness. This place tears at me, as though I am still alive and being drawn and cornered. You must help me find my Arvac! Arvac, my horse. We came to this horrible place together. Please, he's such a loyal creature, and he's been running for so long. You have to save him. A place like this will change you. Arvac! Arvac! Where are you? Arvac, please come back! Come back! Good day.
You saved him. His soul is free. I can feel it. He's such a loyal beast. Here, I'll teach you how to call him to you. He'll help you get around this wretched place. But I'm sure he'd be much happier someplace sunnier. Goodbye, hero. Take good care of Arvac for me. Such a good horse. I think a vampire would be right at home in this place. You'd be... no. But there's no way she would have left it in Tamriel. She wanted to get it as far away from my father as possible. I can't imagine a better place. Then we find out where she hit it. If she's still alive. Well, as alive as she was before. Or as now. Or... <laughs> you know what I mean. Probably to avoid whatever my father would do to her if he could get his hands on her. Or maybe her plan was to come back, but she was stuck here. We won't know until we find her. If you think it'll help. This better not be all the things you just can't be bothered with. Mother! Nika. It can't be. Serana? Is it really you? I can't believe it! How do we get inside? We have to talk. Serana, what are you doing here? Where's your father? He doesn't know we're here. I don't have time to explain. I must have failed. Harkon's found a way to decipher the prophecy, hasn't he? No, you've got it all wrong. We're here to complete the prophecy our way, not his. Wait a moment. You brought a stranger here? Have you lost your mind? No, you don't... You. Come forward. I would speak with you. So how has it come to pass that a vampire of mixed blood is in the company of my daughter? Glorious. Serana claims you're her guardian, yet your first instinct appears to be greed. I see that my daughter is still as naive as ever. Serana has sacrificed everything to prevent Harkon from completing the prophecy. I would have expected her to explain that to you. You think I'd have the audacity to place my own daughter in that tomb for the protection of her Elder Scroll alone? The scrolls are merely a means to an end. The key to the tyranny of the sun is Serana herself. When I fled Castle Volcahar, I fled with two Elder Scrolls. The scroll I presume you found with Serana speaks of Ariel and his arcane weapon, Ariel's Bow. The second scroll declares that the blood of Cold Harbor's daughter will blind the Eye of the Dragon. 
like myself, Serana was a human once. We were devout followers of Lord Molig Ball. Tradition dictates the females be offered to Molig Ball on his summoning day. Few survive the ordeal. Those that do emerge as a pure-blooded vampire. We call such confluences the Daughters of Cold Harbor. It was expected of her, just as it was expected of me. Being selected as an offering to Molik Ball is an honor. She wouldn't have dared turn her back on that. It's what some call the domain of Molik Ball. His place in oblivion. Now you're beginning to see why I wanted to protect Serana, and why I've kept the other Elder Scroll as far from her as possible. If Harkon obtained Ariel's bow, and Serana's blood was used to taint the weapon, the tyranny of the sun would be complete. In his eyes, she'd be dying for the good of all vampires. And how exactly do you plan on completing the prophecy without the death of my daughter? Have you been listening to me? Like Serana, I'm a pure-blooded vampire. My presence on Tamriel is as much of a danger as hers. You care nothing for Serana, or our plight. You see the tyranny of the sun as your chance at deification. And like Harkon, you won't hesitate to destroy anything that stands in your path. Serana? This stranger may call herself a man, but she knows nothing of our struggle. Why should I entrust you to her? This stranger has done more for me in the brief time I've known her than you've done in centuries. How dare you! I gave up everything I cared about to protect you from that fanatic you call a father! Yes, he's a fanatic. He's... changed. But he's still my father. Why can't you understand how that makes me feel? If you'd only open your eyes the moment your father discovers your role in the prophecy, that he needs your blood, you'll be in terrible danger. So to protect me, you decided to shut me away from everything I cared about. You never asked me if hiding me in that tomb was the best course of action. You just expected me to follow you blindly. Both of you were obsessed with your own paths. Your motivations might have been different, but in the end, I'm still just a pawn to you too. I want us to be a family again, but I don't know if we can ever have that. Maybe we don't deserve that kind of happiness. Maybe it isn't for us, but we have to stop him before he goes too far. And to do that, we need the Elder Scroll. I'm sorry, Saron. I didn't know. I didn't see. I've allowed my hatred of your father to estrange us for too long. Forgive me. If you want the Elder Scroll, it's yours. Your intentions are still somewhat unclear to me, but for Serana's sake, I'll assist you in any way that I can. Yes, I've kept it safely secured here ever since I was imprisoned. Fortunately, you're in a position to breach the barrier that surrounds these ruins. You need to locate the tallest of the rocky spires that surround these ruins. At their bases, the barrier's energy is being drawn from unfortunate souls that have been exiled here. Destroy the keepers that are tending them, and it should bring the barrier down. One more word of warning. There's a dragon that calls itself Dernevere roaming the cairn. Be wary of him. The ideal masters have charged him with overseeing the keepers, and will undoubtedly intervene if you're perceived as a threat. When I entered the Soul Cairn, I had intended to strike a bargain with the Ideal Masters, the custodians of this place. I requested refuge in the Soul Cairn, and in exchange, I would provide the Ideal Masters the souls that they crave. If I had foreseen the value they placed on my own soul, I would never have come here. The Ideal Masters unleashed their keepers and sent them to destroy me. Fortunately, 
I was able to hold them at bay and retreat into these ruins. Unfortunately, yes. Since the Keepers weren't able to claim my soul, they had their minions construct a barrier that I'd never be able to breach. Time has very little meaning to me. Consequently, it has little meaning to the Ideal Masters as well. I suppose you could call this the ultimate waiting game. Each watching the other to see which will give in. Harkon's vision is a world plunged in eternal darkness, where the vampire can flourish and never again fear the tyranny of the sun. What he fails to realize is how much attention would be called to our kind if the prophecy came to fruition. If eternal night fell, there are many who wouldn't stand for it. They would raise armies in attempts to return things to normal. The order of the day would be our destruction until every last vampire was hunted down and eliminated. I do. It's how the vampire has survived for millennia, and the only way we can continue to survive in the future. I know very little about them. They're mystic entities that lord over the soul cairn, controlling every aspect from its fabric to its appearance. Well, some necromancers believe they are the crystalline structures dotting the soul cairn. I believe there's more to it than that. I think they transcend what we perceive as a physical form. Perhaps they were once corporeal beings, but they've obviously reached a point where they no longer require a tangible presence. Conduits, through which the ideal masters speak to their underlings and feed on their victims. The Ideal Master's weakness is their insatiable hunger for pure souls. It's the reason for the Soul Cairn's existence, and the only leverage a Necromancer has when bargaining with them. The ability to summon powerful undead guardians, as one would conjure an Atronach or Daedra. However, the majority of Necromancers that are foolish enough to enter into a bargain with the Ideal Master's wind up here, as harvested souls. As you've been traveling in the Soul Cairn, your body has become attuned to it. Let's just say, a tiny part of you rubbed off on it, and in its place, a bit of the Soul Cairn filled the void. You should find no difficulty using the portal any longer. Be careful and keep my daughter safe. 